All right, what am I talking about when I talk about geodesic versus planar calculations? Um, geodesic calculations are done on the curved surface without having to rely on a planar or projected surface or in most often being forced to project data that you know we really should be able to make these calculations on the curved surface. We have the technology. Uh, so let me just demonstrate a couple things. If we use the measure tool, I just want to show you some of the differences. So if I go in here and choose a geodesic measurement, um, and I'm going to use Los Angeles and New York as the um, example. So I'm just clicking and dragging, and I'm getting as close as I can, but not being too picky about it, because we're just going to ballpark these. So around 3,900. 3950 kilometers, 3950-ish kilometers between Los Angeles and New York. And let's actually look at the distance here, around 2500 miles, and if we convert that, it's around 3900 kilometers. So we're in the right ballpark. All right, let's change this though to a planar calculation. When we make it planar, what it's doing is it's pulling from the coordinate system of the map display itself. So we should check this coordinate system here. And right now, I'm in a North America equidistant conic. So that's a really good choice if we want to preserve distance measurements. So let's make our planar calculation now. All right, so around 37. So what's happened here is the equidistant uh, projection or planar surface is actually underestimating the distance between the two points just a little bit. Some of that could be where I'm clicking um, on the map, of course. Uh, let's go in and, and experiment a little bit. So if I go back to my map and change this from something that preserves distance measurements and does a good job with that, let's try putting something in there that doesn't preserve distance. Let's use a North American equal area conic, which is going to strive to preserve uh, area measurements. The map doesn't look like it's changed a lot. Um, let's see here, I think I cleared that. So we'll click here again and we'll go up to New York. Actually really close to the equidistant measurement, 3700. What if we were to use um, a US contiguous? Uh, this is um, a coordinate system that's going to help preserve shape. Let's go in there and try this one. We'll clear that out. Los Angeles to New York. Same thing, around 3,700. Okay, so using the Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere, the Web Mercator is the coordinate system that Google and ARC uses for their base maps because north is always up no matter where you pan or zoom. Um, but that distortion that we see, remember, is um, going to greatly impact your distance and uh, area calculations. So let's go ahead and measure that, clear this out, LA to New York. Yeah, look at the distance that we're getting here, over 5,000 kilometers. That's a lot of uh, discrepancy between the rather consistent distances that we were getting with all of the projections that were, um, you know, decent for North America or the contiguous US. Um, yeah, moral of the story is, you need to know which coordinate system you're making your measurements in. Second moral of the story is that the geodesic calculations tend to be the most accurate, um, or I would think uh, maybe just repeatable because we don't have all these choices of the different projections that we might be using. Um, so that's just a little bit of a background on geodesic versus planar calculations.